Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on the conjugacy of prior distributions. All right, so recall the objective of Bayesian parameter estimation is to determine that posterior distribution has the product of the likelihood and the prior. So now suppose that we have a particular form of the prior distribution where f describes some family of distributions and psi are the hyperparameters that define this define a particular member of this family. Right, so for example, we've been using this example of a beta distribution where psi will be the alpha and beta parameters for that beta distribution. The definition of conjugacy is that if the prior has a particular family, then the prior is conjugate for the statistical model if the posterior has the same family and typically with the hyperparameters being updated. So the family is the same, that is, f hasn't changed, but the hyperparameters have gone from psi to psi prime to some other values. So we've already seen one example of this in the beta distribution. That is, if you have a binomial model with unknown success probability, then if you put a prior that's a beta prior on that success probability, the posterior is also a beta distribution whose, parameters ha whose hyperparameters have been updated as below. All right, so conjugacy is a restriction on the possible priors that you could use in a problem, uh, but the rest of this mini-lecture is just going to show that it's not very restrictive. All right, so in particular, we're going to talk about mixtures of distributions. So suppose we continue with this example of a binomial distribution, and we already knew that a beta distribution was uh, conjugate from the previous slide, but now we're going to use a mixture of two beta distributions. So if you haven't seen this notation before, this just says that theta, our parameter of interest, the prior for theta, has probability pi of coming from this beta distribution here. The beta distribution with parameters, hyperparameters, alpha 1 and beta 1. And it has 1 minus pi probability of coming from a different beta distribution, that is 1 with hyperparameters alpha 2 and beta 2. All right, so this is a two-component mixture. The two components being this beta distribution, that beta distribution, and their mixing probability is pi. All right, so if we work out the math here, we find that the posterior has exactly the same form. All right, so now we're talking about the posterior, but pi has been updated, alpha 1 has been updated, beta 1, alpha 2, and beta 2. So all five of the parameters in this mixture distribution have been updated. The way that they've been updated is below. So all the beta parameters get updated just like they did previously. Right, so alpha 1 prime is just alpha 1 plus y. Beta 1 prime is just beta 1 plus n minus y. So exactly the same way that we previously updated beta distributions. And now the question is, how do we update pi, this mixing probability? And it's somewhat complicated, and you can work out the math. Uh, but here it is. And the key here is that the posterior has exactly the same form as the prior. That is, it's in the same family. It's still a mixture of beta distributions. And what's changed is the hyperparameters, all the alphas, the betas, and the pi for that mixture. All right, so just to show how this would work in an example, uh, I'm going to continue with this uh, analysis of Plumlee's uh, free throw data. So again, recall that he made 79 of his 120 attempts uh, as of January 14th. Um, and so we're going to suppose that we wish to use the prior that has one half probability on the beta 16-4 distribution and one half probability on the beta 10-10 distribution. Roughly these correspond to a decent free throw shooter and a not so good free throw shooter. Right? This one is expected to make about 80% of their shots. This one is expected to make fit half of them, half of their shots. All right, and again, we've assumed here that the mixing probability is one half and one half. So one half coming from this beta 16.4 and one half from the 10.10. Using the formula on the previous page, we can find the posterior. Uh, but if we graph it, this is what it'll look like. All right, so here the prior is shown in black, and the posterior is shown as the red dashed line. You can very clearly see the mixture distribution in the prior here because the prior is bimodal, right? Here's one mode, and here's the second mode. 
that's exactly corresponding to here this beta 16.4 distribution and here's the beta 10.10 distribution mode. Now use the formula on the previous page and we can then just plot the density for that mixture prior and here it is in the posterior the red dashed line um, and notice now it only it looks unimodal there is it is still in fact a mixture distribution but the modes are so close that it's hard to separate the two uh, but you can see now that we have a posterior distribution and from the previous slide that that family of distributions is the same as the prior thus the model is conjugate the prior is conjugate for the statistical model we can go one step further and talk about point mass priors so on the previous uh, couple of slides we used two beta distributions and had a mixture of two betas this time we're going to take one of those betas and replace it with a point mass so what this notation right here is saying is that with probability pi our parameter theta is exactly some value theta naught now with some other probability 1 minus pi it comes from a beta alpha beta distribution so again it's a mixture distribution but the difference here is that uh, beta is a continuous function whereas this is discrete this is saying that our parameter theta comes exactly from this value theta naught <clears throat> All right, so we can update as we've done before. Uh, this next step is just showing that again, this is a conjugate prior. It's conjugate because it has exactly the same form. We have a mixture of a discrete distribution where theta is exactly theta naught, and a beta distribution whose parameters have been updated in exactly the same way that we've updated them before. And we have a mixing probability that has been updated. We update it according to this equation right here. And again, I'll let you verify that. Uh, but the key here is that this mixture prior is still conjugate for this model because the posterior has exactly the same family as the prior. All right, again, we can apply this to Plumlee's data. And now we're going to say, let's suppose that he has a free throw shooting percentage of one half. This happened to have been his free throw shooting percentage from the the, from the previous three seasons. And so essentially one of the questions we're asking here is right, we're giving one half probability that his free throw shooting percentage this year is exactly the same as it was in the past three years and one half probability that it's something else. And at this point we're being very vague about what we think that is by using a beta 1 1 prior also known as a uniform 0 1 prior. All right, use the formula on the previous page to find the posterior, and here it is. This slide is now a bit more complicated. I'll start with the prior. The prior, remember, has two components. There's one half probability that it comes from a beta distribution, 1, 1. That's the solid line component. The solid line here is at 0.5, because this component only provides half of the prior mass. The other half of the prior mass is right here, this vertical line at 0.5, the red one. So with probably one half in the prior, the success probability is one half. And with probably one half, it's uniform zero one. I apologize for all the one halves floating around. We can use the formula on the previous page to find the posterior distribution for the success probability. Uh, again, it's a mixture of a point mass at 0.5. Uh, this is barely noticeable. There's a very small vertical red line also at 0.5. It turns out this probability is only 0.02, or 2%. The other 98% is this beta updated beta distribution right here. So the full posterior is the mixture of this 2% of a point mass at 0.5 and this updated beta distribution, which has 98% in the posterior. All right, so in summary, conjugacy is a property of a prior distribution for a particular statistical model that provides analytical tractability, right? It's, if you require a prior to be conjugate, this is a restriction on the possible priors that you could use in that problem. Uh, but through the use of mixture distributions, uh, 
these priors can be as flexible as you'd like. In particular, I only showed two component mixtures, but we could have three component mixtures, four component, even infinite component mixtures, and they would still be conjugate. I'd like to also point you to a, the Wikipedia list of conjugate prior distributions.